In this video, we're going to give an example language that is not even Turing recognizable. So this is the first example language we've seen in this class of languages. We've proved that something must exist in this, in this category of languages. Now we're going to give an actual example of a language that is not Turing recognizable. In other words, this language is so bizarre, when given an example that is in the language, we can't even tell whether it's in the language. The first point we want to make is that if a language is decidable, then it's Turing recognizable. Well, that is sort of pretty clear. Uh, if we can recognize both members of the language and uh, we can recognize a string that's not in the language, then certainly we can recognize a string that's in the language and accept. But we can also talk about its complement, the complement language, those strings that are not in the language. We can also recognize those. Essentially, if a language is decidable, when given a string, we can say, is it in the language? Yes. Or is it not in the language? No. We don't ever loop. There is a Turing machine in existence for this language that will always halt and say yes or no. The element, this string is in the language or it's not. So we can recognize things that are in the language and by just reversing the accept, reject aspects of this Turing machine, we can also recognize things that are not in the language, that are in its complement. Every decidable language is Turing recognizable. It's a subset. Now, by saying its complement is also Turing recognizable, we'd, all we need to show is just how we can recognize something that's in the complement. If we're given a string x, is it in the complement language? Well, just run the decider that we have for L, which we're assuming is decidable, so it has a decider, decider and give the opposite answer. Okay? So we can tell what's in the language and what's in the complement. That is, what's, in, what's not in the language. We can also look at the inverse statement. If we've got a language that is Turing recognizable, and we also know that its complement, L bar, is also Turing recognizable, then we can conclude the language is decidable. In other words, if we for language L to be Turing recognizable, it means we've got a Turing machine that will accept if we give it a string that's in L. For its complement to be Turing recognizable, it means we've got a Turing machine that when you give it a string, it will accept when the string is in L bar. Okay? So how can we so we're saying that L is then decidable. And if we want to decide L, that is, if we want to build a decider for L, we have to be able to answer the question, is X in L or not? Okay. And never never loop. We've got to be able to answer this question without looping. So since we've assumed that L is Turing recognizable and L bar, its complement is Turing recognizable, we've, we're assuming that machines M1 and M2 exist, where M1 is a recognizer for the language and M2 is a recognizer for the complement. So to determine whether some given string is in L or not, all we have to do is run these two machines. Now, they may not, M1 might not halt if it's given a string that's not in L. We only know that it's a recognizer, so we can only be guaranteed that it will halt if it's given a string that is in L. And likewise, M2 might loop. We only know that if M2 is given a string that is not in L, that it will halt. So we run M1 and M2 in parallel. Do a little work on M1, do a little work on M2, and then come back to M1. Any string is either in L or not. It's either in L or it's complement. So one of these two machines will eventually halt. If it's in L, we can be sure that M1 will halt. If it's not in L, we can be sure that M2 will halt. So either machine will halt. Maybe, probably both of them will halt, but one of them will halt. And one of them will accept. Okay, exactly one of them will accept. If they both halt, then uh, one will accept and one will reject. 
If M1 is the one that accepted, then we accept. If t M2 accepts, then we know that the string is not in L. It's in L bar, and so we reject. It's not in L. Either way, we'll eventually halt, and we'll get an answer. We'll have our decision. So where are we? What have we done? Well, we first showed that if a language is decidable, then it is Turing recognizable and its complement is Turing recognizable. And then we showed that if a language is Turing recognizable and its complement is Turing recognizable, then it's decidable. So putting those two pieces together, we can conclude that a language is decidable if and only if it and its complement are Turing recognizable. So a language is decidable if and only if the language and its complement are Turing recognizable. Now there's some also some terminology that's uh, used called co-Turing recognizable. <clears throat> a language is said to be co-Turing recognizable if its complement is Turing recognizable. So using that terminology we can restate this theorem as follows. A language is decidable if and only if it is Turing recognizable and co-Turing recognizable. And now we're almost ready for the punchline. We're almost there. Okay? Recall that so far we've shown that the acceptance problem for Turing machines, the halting problem, is Turing recognizable. And we've also shown that this same language is not decidable. Okay, so it's Turing recognizable, but it's not decidable. So we can ask about our comp the complement. We can conclude by the logic we just had that the complement of ATM is not Turing recognizable. So here is a set that is not Turing recognizable. What it means is if you give me something, a string, in this language, there is no Turing machine in existence. And there cannot be a Turing machine that will always halt and accept if that string is in ATM bar. Okay, this, this language, the complement of ATM, is not Turing recognizable. If you've got a machine that works correctly, it will not always terminate. Okay? And how can we, I mean, the proof of this, if you've uh, been following, it should be pretty straightforward. Assume that it is Turing recognizable. Well, we, if a language and its complement are both Turing recognizable, then the language is decidable. But we've already proved that ATM is not decidable, so therefore its complement, ATM bar, is not uh, Turing recognizable. So it's kind of hard to imagine what this language looks like, and rightly so, because it's a language that's not decidable and it's not even Turing recognizable. Okay? It's a very abstract beast, a very unusual set of strings. Uh, and so it's this kind of stuff that makes this, this material, in my view, really very interesting. What is this thing? What is this language? What does it look like? It's very hard, it's very difficult to picture it. You can't get a good handle on it. So this is an example language that's not only not decidable, but it's not even Turing recognizable. And remember that there are uncountably, infinitely many languages that are in this category.